everybody to my first video recording review of a game in the conflict series called Operation Sea Lion. These games are done by an indie developer named, I'm going to murder the name, I know it, and I apologize for that in advance, Joni Newtonen. And he does quite a few of these games, if I may show you really quick here. I've got 15 of them. And I have bought all of these on my own. They're $3.99 in the game store. And I'm not being paid to do these reviews. I'm just doing them because I love these games. And they're quite a bit of fun for you if you are a war gamer and you have an Android device. Phone, I should say. I don't think he's got these for the tablets quite yet. I could be wrong. Uh, you have quite a few to choose from and quite a few different styles of games in here as well. They're all Hex Encounter pretty much. But each one, um, some of them are a little more different than others. But this particular one, Operation Sea Lion, is the one that I am going to show you here today because A, it's a hypothetical, B, it's got quite a few things going on that makes it a little interesting, and C, it's not easy. Now, I've won this game, but I've also gotten my butt kicked at it several times, so I'm going to play through a few turns here for this first video, and if there's interest, I will just do some more and cover some of the other products as well. So let's look first at this front page here. He doesn't just drop you in, although if you wanted to, it's pretty easy to figure out how to play this game. Touch to select, touch to move. Uh, you have something along the lines of uh, power-ups that you can use, though they're not power-ups, they're uh, resources, I believe is what they're called. Uh, but if you want to look at things like, say, the FAC Guide, Combat Support, How to Win, Unit Markings, you've got quite a bit of information in there if you want to check it out. Uh, that will tell you about battle and battle support. I'll get more into that in the game, perhaps, but I'm not going to go into great detail here. Uh, got a Facebook page and uh, change logs to this particular title. And as I said, this guy is pretty prolific. He does all of this on his own. He's very responsive as well. If you send him a message, he will respond pretty quickly, I believe. And uh, the other good thing I should say about these series of games is if you want to try them out on the Play Store, they are... There are free versions of each of these conflict series games. So there's a free version of the Operation Sea Lion if you would like to go on and download it. The only catch is it is limited to 15 turns. So if you're like me, I downloaded the free version of this and I played it to 15 turns and I'm like, this isn't enough. I need more. <laughs> Especially considering the first several turns, you're probably doing something a little bit... Uh, well, you got several turns before you can actually get your troops ashore so that's kind of a struggle but I'll, I'll talk about that here in a little bit so let's just go ahead and start it and here we go now you start with a view of the channel and as you can see in the mini map in the upper right corner there there's a little box near the bottom we're very close to Normandy here and it'll pop up something as soon as you move the map and I'm not going to go into reading this word for word uh, you can always pause this and look at it if you want but this basically is telling you that this is a hypothetical scenario and this kind of goes into it as well uh, to summarize, he's saying, okay, this is, as I said, a hypothetical scenario. Uh, <laughs> everything would have to go pretty well for the Germans to this point in order to invade England. Uh, here's an overview. I tap the mini-map, and this is what comes up. Uh, the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, of course, would have to defeat the RAF in southern England. There's also assumptions made that the major elements of the Royal Navy were defeated or, or held off, basically, uh, by the the uh, German Navy and Air Force, I would assume. And the only thing, though, that's actually in play are destroyers. And as you can see here, if I tap to select one, and anytime you tap a unit in this particular game and select it, it'll uh, give you a little bit of background on it. Uh, destroyers are basically your screening force. The British will have destroyers as well, and they will have a lot of them. So that's always fun. Uh, the little S's are supply ships. And this is a major component of this particular game, because when your German units cross, and you're controlling Germany, by the way, I should have said that out in the front, sorry about that. When you cross to England, you are going to not be able to capture supply sources and use them as your own. Supply is very much controlled by you, and there's no way around it. But it's pretty simple. Uh, the only issue is it's, it's going to determine what exactly... Well, it's going to determine how many units you can have in England. The more units you have, the more supply they're going to suck up. And there will be moments where you're going to be having units out of supply. So that's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, so these supply units here can land in clear hexes or in cities if you've captured them. Now, if you look here, say, in the Dover area, right across from the Pas de Calais, 
I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, supply ships could invade in these blank hexes or the hexes with the, the, the British flags. I'm not sure what those are. I think they have something to do probably with the AI programming. Uh, but regardless, I can tell you really quick about the terrain. The hex here with the lines is swamp hex. The hex with the trees is, of course, forest. The darker hexes are, of course, cities. The AF is an airfield. Germany wants to capture as many of those as it can because it gets a Stuka strike resource for every one that it captures. The blue lines are rivers, and the TMP, I believe, is for extra movement points. I could be wrong about that, but I believe that's what it is. The red crosses are hospitals, and you can build more of them, but you can only build them in terrain, or excuse me, in, well, that's true, in clear terrain or in provinces that you control. And if you look here in the middle around uh, Tunbridge, you'll see dotted line. That's pretty much the, the, the province. So if you control that whole province, you can build a hospital in there somewhere. And believe me, you're going to want to create a lot of them because hospitals, you rest a unit on top of it, it'll heal it up. Now let's look at your units really quick here. Uh, besides the destroyers and the supply ships, you've got Gebirgsjägers, or I believe that's the way to pronounce it, or as best as an American can. They're basically mountain troops, as you'll see. Uh, the maximum strength of any German infantry unit, or any British infantry unit for that matter, is six in this scenario, I believe. And the blue dot at the top is movement points. If you look down at the bottom, you'll see an explanation of the unit. It says 1st Mountain Division HP 6 of 6, so it's at full strength, MPs 1 of 1. It is possible to go into negative movement points, like when you cross a river, for example, or you get bombarded or strafed by enemy units, uh, or just, I want to say fatigue also affects that, and that's what you're going to look at here further on the line. BA is battles. Of course, it's zero at this time. I guess it doesn't count battles that it might have been in up to this point. It's counting battles only in this scenario. And then FA percentage is fatigue, so that is very important. I've got it currently set to 80%, and I believe that's the default. So when a unit gets at 80% or higher, it will display a little icon on itself that will say uh, FA, and it's red, so you can see it pretty easily. And it's a good idea to rest those units because if they get into combat, they're probably going to get their butts kicked pretty quick. Uh, you also have regular infantry divisions. And here we have the 17th Infantry Division. Uh, you got to be very careful. One thing I should say about this is if you tap a unit, if you have a unit next to it, like say the Gebirgsjäger, or I should say Mountain Division, uh, if, if I wanted to select that unit instead, you shouldn't just tap on it because if I did that, just tap on the on the Mountain unit, you see he moves. So that can really screw you up when you're trying to move troops around. So if you select a unit, just tap it again to deselect it if you want to move on to something else. Okay, so uh, here is a Flieger, perhaps? No, a Luflanda division. So there's some airborne troops. But you can't drop paratroopers in this game as far as I can tell. That kind of stinks. So I'll just go ahead and get into this really quick. Oh, there are some Panzers, I should say. And where are they? Let's look around here. Uh, oh, I bet there's one in Cherbourg. Yep, there's one right there. So I'll go ahead and move him up here, not that it matters. So I'm going to move my supply ships by selecting them. And then you see the lighter area shows you where you can move, so you just kind of tap the next hex that you want it to go to. As for the destroyers, I'm going to keep them pretty close together. One of the key concepts of battle in this game is support. And if you have just a one-on-one -on -one attack, one of your units against one of theirs, it's pretty much a good chance that you're going to lose, especially if you're evenly matched. Um, there's no guarantees that you're going to ever win a combat. Now, if you have several other units adjacent to that enemy unit that you're attacking, that ups your chance of winning significantly. Uh, I'm going to move these supply ships a little bit closer as well. My plan really, this is a good place to invade, and I think the Germans probably had plans to do that, and it was pretty obvious they were going to do it because it's such a short transit time. I'm going to go ahead and send some troops to sea. Now, you have a very limited number of uh, something called naval troop transport points, I believe it was. I can't remember for sure. Um, I'm very prepared for this video. I'm speaking mostly from memory here, so sorry about that. But uh, you can't basically put every single troop or every single unit to sea. Uh, you have a certain number, and once that number is reached, you have to wait a few turns before it will reset itself. So, say, troop transports that are taking this unit, the 7th Infantry Division, once they land in England, they kind of technically return back to the main uh, continent, and you can reload troops on there once they're available. So I'll move him there, I'll move the 
mountain unit to see as well. I want to start with infantry. Panzer divisions will take up quite a bit of supply. <clears throat> Excuse me. Supply ships are very important, and you will run out of them very quickly, especially if the British come calling with their destroyers. That's something that I've learned the hard way. So I'm going to move these destroyers up to here and just keep them there. And by the way, the number in the upper right corner, which you'll see on, this, on these destroyers that's framed in black, is a number of fuel points. And they will use one fuel point for every space they move. And then you notice the MPs movement points in the blue dots. Those will, of course, show you how far it could use, move in that single turn. So a ship that still, excuse me, stays still will not use any fuel and uh, will not use any movement points either. Uh, so the thing here with the destroyers too is you really need to gang up on the British destroyers. If you try to engage them one-on-one, -on -one, most likely the German ships are going to lose. That's just the way it goes. If you have more than one, it will up your odds of winning tremendously, but in the later game it becomes a lot more difficult because of uh, the British just piling on destroyers, messing up your supply line, and you're trying to conquer a country that has no desire to be conquered by you, obviously, so that becomes a problem. So, And that's it. I'm looking at the overview map here. There's nothing I can really do. As I said, there's several turns where you're not doing much except moving ships around. So I'm going to go ahead and end the turn main menu. Oh, one more thing I should point out here. Look at the bottom. It says turn one, VP, I should start at the beginning, sorry, VP, 20 of 110. So you need, I believe it's 100 victory points actually to win this game. Uh, so right now we only have 20. Turn one, September 19th, 1940, hour 06, which I believe is 0600. Uh, TMPs are the tactical movement points, that's what they are. And NTT are the naval transport points I was talking about earlier. There's still four left. I don't think I have anybody left that I could put to C right now. And let me see this guy. Yep, I can't do it. So that's it. So for right now, I'll hit main menu. And I can show you the settings really quick. You can change all kinds of things in here. Animate movement of AI units, etc. Uh, you can change the size of the map. You can change the font size. This guy's included a lot of options in here. If you really want to, you know, tailor your game to fit your, your play style or your needs or whatever, it's, it's great. So let me do that again in turn. And it says, you really want to do that? And there's some extra quotes down here, historical stuff usually. Nothing happened because there's no battles, but your phone will buzz. A short buzz if there was a combat that you won. A long buzz if there was a combat that you lost. And that's anywhere. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a neat little feedback feature. Now this will summarize, this what you're seeing here will summarize exactly what happened on the last turn, which was exactly Bupkis. Uh, we have 20 victory points. We need 100. There you go. And controlled area is 35%, which is pretty much the area of France and the low countries there that you control on the map in the south and southeast corners of the map. And then new resources, you get one extra tactical movement point. So, for a total zero, okay, well, that makes sense, I guess. All right, so now, looking at the overhead map, I look. I want to look at the sea spaces and see if there's any British coming to calling. I, there will be, and there's some little pop-ups, too, that will tell you little bits of history about this stuff. And he does go into great detail telling you, look, <laughs> this this is going to happen under very ideal conditions. And even then, you've got a lot of supply issues that you've got to manage. And it's not going to be easy. So we're moving the transports towards their destiny. I move the supply ships closer as well. I'm not worried about British ships here. I've played this game a few times, so I know what's going on. I'll move a couple more into ports. I'll go ahead and move him to sea. I've got, whoops, I've got three naval transport uh, whoops. There we go. I was messing around with the... accidentally pressed the icon for recording. Sorry about that. Uh, I've got some extra naval transport points, and I believe the Panzers and the Mechanized take two, and the Infantry takes one. So there we go. And I don't really, like I said, want to mess with putting a Panzer Division whoops, on there. Okay, now one other thing I'll mention, these circles, yellow circles around these towns, that's supply sources, and that like, it's really not important in this game. It is in other games, but here not so much because you're not going to be too worried about it. You could capture a British supply source, like, say, London. It's not going to help you. <laughs> These supply units that you're bringing on or to England are what your army subsides off of. So they're very important to not get blown up or sunk. If they do, you're going to have a hard time. Even if you lose one, it's going to really make you hurt later. In the beginning, not so much because you don't have very many units. You're going to have a lot of supply 
to, uh, to feed them. But overall, it's going to be very difficult to, to maintain. And like I said, I've won before. It was not easy. I had several times where my supply went to zero and my troops suffered accordingly, but I still managed to, to win by that point. Thank goodness. Well, at least electronically. It wouldn't have been a great thing if they'd done it in real life. So that's it. I'm not going to land a supply ship onto a blank space by itself without a, without a troop unit to, to protect it. And that would just be dumb. They would just capture it if I did that. And I know there are British troops here in this area. So let's go ahead and end the turn again. And whoops, I'm hitting the icon for recording. There we go. And campaign status, extra TMP. And again, we haven't captured anything, so that's not really big news. I'll leave this transport unit here. I'll leave the supply unit. Um, the early version of this invasion called for landings on a very broad front. This would have stretched the German naval and aerial forces too thin, but it also would have split German supply and reinforcement convoys into smaller ones. Now, okay, that is pretty much true, but when you start, it's probably a good idea just to focus on one area. Uh, I've tried before with multiple invasion zones, and it's not fun to watch them get slaughtered when that happens. So it's very important to remember that you need supply. Even in one hex, you need a supply unit to, to keep that unit in that hex supplied. Uh, <clears throat> and as you join hexes together, as you conquer, you can uh, uh, not have to worry about it so much. And here we go. Uh, I can't move him to see because there's no na naval transport left there. I'm going to move him along the coast very carefully, and then here we go. So we got a British destroyer. I'm going to tap him, but he's not going to be highlighted. But you can see at the bottom of the screen where it just says Destroyer Royal Navy. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see what happens. I'll attack him with one guy, and victory. So we won, and you can see a, a breakdown of the results here. It tells you he lost one HP. Usually I just tap through this really quick, and you might read it at first, but you got to be careful about that because there is some quick information or good information displayed and you'll quickly get rid of it if you do that. Uh, the other thing is when you win, the victory dialogue will pop up and if you tap through it accidentally thinking you're going to have another turn and it goes bye-bye and you're kind of hosed there. So, And see, here we go. Battle lost. So hey, that didn't go too well. I'm going to use this other unit again. Wow, this is not good. This is pretty bad. I'm surprised actually. Usually we kick this destroyer's butt. Oh, there we go. And, yeah, I'm not even going to try to, to do that again. So, gosh, that's crazy. That's not good. So when a destroyer gets damaged to repair it, you have to put it on a on an anchor hex, which is way down here. Uh, you see where the box is on the mini-map, so you can tell where I am. That's the closest one to those units up there, although there's several of them. I don't know if you can see them on this mini-map. There's a couple there. Uh, and you can't use Royal Navy facilities, so you're... That's it. You're limited to those areas, and it will you will feel the pinch later. So let's go ahead and keep our invasion forces rolling. I'm just going to move them towards this little area here in the southern 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 eastern tip, I should say, of England. And 26th Infantry Division is just going on a cruise here. Nice long one. And look at the bottom of the screen too. It says turn three. It's something I didn't do before. Um, it is. Here we go, hour 18 of September 19th, so it is uh, 16, or excuse me, 1800 hours is, is 6 o'clock p.m., of course. And there's nothing coming this way yet, but there will be, trust me. And I'm going to go ahead and move these guys over a little bit, because there will be supply ships coming from down here. And that's bad, because the British will have a lot of destroyers showing up at about that point. Uh, so it's a very interesting in, in, in how you maneuver these things. Um, they have a certain sight range, and I'm not quite sure what that is, but they you, you get them too close, they will see it, and they'll go right after it. So that's it for right now. We've got nothing going on elsewhere. I'm going to hit the campaign status at the bottom here, and you can see it'll just go over what it told you at the beginning of the turn, if you forget something or you accidentally click through it. So let's hit in turn. Yes, and we are... Okay, so we got reinforcements. The 24th Infantry Division has appeared in Cherbourg. we got another tactical movement point. Um, wonderful. So let me just... That just was talking about Germans carrying out various tests. So there's, like I said, a little bit of historical info presented in here. You can shut it off if it annoys you. It never bothered me. So I'm going to hope that I can get this guy. 
Good. All right, so since there's only one unit next to him now, I'm going to move this other guy up. And you see, I want to make sure that there's two against him every time I attack him. And now we're beating him. So he's down to three. He's not going to be a threat anytime soon. Uh, I need to get some units up here, though. And quickly. Okay, so we can land our first unit here. What I'm going to do is land this guy first. The first mountain division, the first German unit on British soil. Oh, okay, so it buzzed at me, so there were, I don't know if you heard that or not, or there's a British unit that was in that hex, and that happens sometimes, but it was a home guard unit, so they're not extremely strong, but they can cause trouble for a weakened German unit, and I landed the uh, supply ship, as you can see, and I've landed the uh, other unit, the 7th Infantry Division, and he's right next to Coastal Home Guard 6. And I'll move the supply units up here, and I'll move some more troops up here in anticipation of being able to land if these guys get to move anytime soon. Let me click that and see. I've got this tra transport to move. And that little Android recording icon is going to drive me nuts. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, move the transports closer. As I said, I'm moving them all to this little corner of the map here to concentrate my supply sources. It's a little bit of a longer haul for these supply units, but early game, that's okay because the British are not going to be all over your business like they will be later. See, there we go. So there's a British unit. I'm going to go ahead and approach him. Hopefully he's the only one. I'm surprised it didn't identify him. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attack him. Hopefully we'll have better luck on this one. Good. Got him. Okay, so I'll move this guy up and attack again. And victory again. And since we're in the same hex, I'll attack one more time. So that's more like what should have happened back there east. So I've got him good. Uh, he's down to five strength. That's awesome. So I can go ahead and I think... How many naval transport points? Zero. So I can't move anybody out yet. I've only landed the one transport unit, and he's actually probably not had time to get back home yet. Okay, I just want to make sure that I've got everybody here. And uh, I believe I have. So we can end the turn. Uh, one thing that you might have noticed is the R at the bottom resources. I talked about those power-ups. Not really the best of terms for this kind of thing, but it's kind of what it is. Uh, we don't have any yet, so we can't use them. So I will show you more about that when they come available. <clears throat> go ahead and end turn. And move that thing out of the way again. There we go. And there's a long buzz. So I just got my butt kicked somewhere, and I'm not sure where that might have been. Oh, it was right here. Okay. So as you see, the uh, first mountain division suffered one point loss, and it was probably from an attack from this guy here to his north, whoops, northwest, the uh, first London division. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think I'm just going to play through this one turn and end the video there and see what you guys like to see. I'm not going to attack a city directly. That would be crazy because I don't know what's there. And just because you're next to it at sea doesn't mean you're going to identify it. Uh, so I'm not going to land in that tree space because a supply unit camp. That would be bad. I'll move him over. I'll go ahead and move these guys up there. I'll move him down this way. And I believe that <clears throat> there's no supply units further east. Um, I could... Yeah, I can't land this transport yet because these other units on land are not out of the way yet. And as you can see, they're already starting to get attract attention, of course. One good thing to do is if you want to try a multiple landing th uh, operation is once you start conquering England, or conquering England, conquering the southeast of England, you can look at these stretches a little further to the west here for possible landing sites. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got these supply units. Another thing is the RAF, of course, had to be defeated for this to happen. At least that's what the game assumes. It, <laughs> it They will still come out to play. Now, they only affect your unit's movement points, I believe. I don't know if they affect their strength points. I could be wrong about that, but... Okay, let's try to finish off this destroyer here. Yeah, he got him. And got him again, but he moved way the heck down there. I think he's weak enough that I can risk a one destroyer attack. He moved. There we go. So I got him down to one point. He's probably going to be a goner. Let me try to get this guy now. And he runs away. And he withdrew. And there's another one, so this isn't going to be good. This is going to guarantee you be an 8 strength destroyer. But I can't resist taking a poke at him. At least this guy will probably be attracted to these destroyers instead of my 
transports. And of course, I don't have any movement points on there because I already moved them. All right. Well, that's what we're looking at right now. The invasion has just started. It's not really started off well because, like I said, usually these guys, these two destroyers, manage to hit this eight strength and destroy them by this point. I didn't plan on losing a strength point from each of them. That's really going to hurt later. And we just landed the first two units on British home soil. Uh, believe me, we got a long way to go. There's a lot of territory to fight over and conquer. And uh, so let me know if you like this series, if you want me to keep recording these videos, or uh, if you like this, we can look. I can look into doing other videos as well. So until next time, my screen name is Bunzai Cat. I generally do a lot of work with the Grogheads website, but uh, this is kind of a separate venture. I don't know. It's not really something I'm looking to do independently, but I'm kind of wanting to associate it with them. I don't know. I don't own their site. I don't own their name. So I'm kind of leery to say that, but uh, I'm sure they probably wouldn't mind to get the publicity. So anyway, see you next time.